Okay, I've done 15 minutes of revision. You know what, I'm gonna reward myself with five minutes of just relaxing on my phone. I'm gonna go on Snapchat, I'm gonna go on Instagram, you know? Just five minutes and then I'll get back to another 15 of minutes of revision. You look up from your phone, all right, time to get back to revising. Oh my God, two, three hours have passed. It's late now, it's getting to 9, 10. Uh, it's okay, it's fine, I'll revise in the morning before my exam. It's late now, so I'm, I'll revise in the morning. But you go to bed with your phone, and you're still scrolling. And because of that, you wake up late the day after. So you don't have time to literally revise. You have to rush to school. And then you are literally cram revising right outside your exam hall. But for some reason, being on your phone when you were revising, that's distracted you, and the information's not gone in your head. So you get an F. Does this sound familiar to you? I bet it does, and do you know why? Because that was literally like my Monday. <laughs> that was my Monday. <laughs> I just ran you through a typical day in my life during my A-levels. Your phone is supposed to be a tool designed to be a phone, not a place for you to escape. I wanna go through five steps that will literally not just help you stop scrolling on your phone. Oh, we're going above and beyond. We're gonna be able to cure your phone addiction. Our end goal here is for your phone to start becoming a productive, like a productive use. The times that you use your phone is literally only for being productive. And stick to the end because the last step is probably one of the most important ones and probably will help you the most. Okay, step one, delete apps. Look, go through like on your iPhone where it'll tell you like screen time and just go through the apps that have like the most usage right because they probably have more control over you than you have control over it and that already sounds bad what apps do you want to have which you have less control over and it has more control over you that's not, that doesn't sound good and if you have an android and it doesn't tell you screen time or it does i don't really know then uh, you figure that out for yourself you use an android and iphone users go through the apps and literally delete the ones that you do not need if it has more control over you than you have over it, then get rid of it. And the thing is, you might already be listening to that and going, oh shit, he's actually telling me to do something. He's telling me to delete apps, which makes sense, but oh, that's, that's a scary word. <laughs> that's scary. Uh, yeah, that's fair enough. You may not be able to right now. You may not be able to delete those apps. Maybe YouTube is one of them. You delete it off your phone, but then you just watch it on Safari or you watch it on your laptop or you watch it on your xbox so maybe you can't delete it right now because you'll just re-download it afterwards then you gotta do something a little different you gotta reduce your usage over time slowly reduce your usage times you want to get that screen time lower maybe 50 percent is on netflix or like youtube you want to reduce that you want to keep reducing that and some might say that this is actually even better because You've got to look at that app. You've got to look at YouTube and be like, no, no, I'm not going to go on you. I'm not going to go on you. Staring right at it. And that actually uses more discipline. That's more impressive and that will help you a lot more in the long run. So you might actually choose to do this anyway. This might answer your question. Ziggy. Shush. Shush. On a little side note, literally just after doing this, it's just step one from after doing this my 12 hours screen time went down to five hours however five hours is still kind of a lot five six hours that's still quite a bit that's not little that's still five hours of your whole day just on your phone but it was all on like notes for youtube it was all on editing and files because i saved some of my files from my laptop to my phone it was all on that and obviously i'm not going to get rid of that because that's all valuable I have control over that. That's productive. Step two, turn off notifications. Man, why have you got notifications on? Who are you desperately needing to hear from? Why, why, why do you need to keep staring at your phone at every notification you see? And some of you might say like, oh, but like, what about emergencies, emergencies, you know? Like if I, I am gonna tell you to put your phone on do not disturb, but that means you don't get any calls and stuff. You're like, yeah, but what if I get an emergency? Dude, what emergency have you got that's like death defying for you to stare at your phone at every single notification? Snapchat? Oh no. It's a pretty big emergency. 
Oh no, you what emergency? You haven't got any emergency. Like, what are you you waiting for your child to be born? You about to get married to the love of your life? Probably not. We don't get no bitches here. No. And if you are like waiting for quite an important emergency, so like maybe if your dad calls you and you don't pick up, he might whoop your ass, then just edit the do not disturb. You can edit a do not disturb and like rename it something else and allow certain notifications. So like for me, I have work. However, it's all notifications are off except family because family is important. So literally only like my dad and like my family can message me and I'll see it. And I don't really get calls from my dads anyway because like we don't do that. It's not a relationship. We kind of just talk to each other in real life, like normal human beings. <laughs> so that kind of works out for me. And if there's an emergency, I can get it. So you can do the same unless you have an Android. Step three, turn off raise to wake. Well, why? Why do you have that on? Like it's inbuilt and it's turned on automatically. But like, what's the point? Like raising the phone it's like when you raise it it'll turn on automatically so you don't need to press the on, uh, the on button what's the point like turn it off because literally having to turn on the button will make us less likely want to go on our phone for no reason when we lift our phone up and it's still black we've got to turn it on we'll be less likely to actually want to go on our phone wow humans are fucking lazy step four Clear up your homepage. There's a thing that you can do on Apple iPhones, and that is you can like press and hold on an app and you can like delete it, but it doesn't get rid of it. Like it just puts it onto the library, like the little locker storage, which you can't see. You have to like either search for the app or scroll very far to the right and it will have all these little like little boxes which hold them. So you're not deleting the app, you're just getting it off the homepage and literally just keep the apps that you need. Like if you look at my phone, I don't have my phone on me, but like all you have is notes, uh, YouTube studio, not the actual app, YouTube studio, so I can see like how well these videos are doing, and then file and photos, that's it. That is all I have on there. And you know, it makes my phone look schmexy. Step five, and this is probably one of the most important ones if you wanna make like a really big change, and it will literally like, you'll notice it from like day and night. And that is time zoning. Your time is so important. Your time is so, so important and you can do so much in the space of a day. However, like 12 hours of your day is literally just picking up your phone for literally no reason. 80% of the time that you are picking up your phone, you haven't got a reason to. So ask yourself this, why am I picking up my phone? When you pick up your phone, literally actively ask yourself, okay, why am I picking up my phone? Why am I about to go on my phone? What's the reason? Okay. I need to message my dad back because he messaged me about a parcel that's come home. I need to message my family so I can go to, so I can give the time to all that family reunion. If you have literally got not a reason to go on your phone, you're literally picking up, ask yourself, why am I going on my phone? Oh, I don't know. Just picked it up instinctively. Put your phone down. You haven't got a reason to. Literally just keep this in your mind. And also, if you do have a reason to go on your phone, keeping that in your mind, that means you're less likely to get distracted than go on Instagram and start scrolling or TikTok. You'll actually be going on your phone for the reason that you want to go on your phone. Your phone will be a tool. It'll be productive. And time zoning is basically where you choose a time zone where you aren't going to touch your phone. You are going to do all the stuff you need to do and you are not going to pick up your phone. Like right now, it's the evening. My phone is downstairs. I'm upstairs. I'm nowhere near it. The best time that I can recommend for you, like a little head start, like a, an ideal time for you is when you wake up. Right, for me, that's like seven. 7 to 10. Those 3 hours, that's my time zone. Do not touch my phone and just get all the things I do. For you it might be different, you might get up 8, 9 or maybe you're a lazy fuck and then you get up at like 10. So it'll be like 10 to 12. Just choose the time that you wake up. That period of time, do not touch your phone and get all the stuff you need to get done first thing in the morning. Then, do whatever you want, okay? Just do whatever you want, I don't care. Actually, I i do care but like then after it'll be fine and do you know why i say that it's because people who touch their phone first thing in the morning they sleep with it like it's their lover and then they get up in the morning and they grab it compared to people who don't touch their phone first thing in the morning the people who don't touch their phone they're so much more productive they feel so much more energized and happy that they feel like that they started their day off to a good day and then they end up having a good day for the rest of the day 
compared to the people who sleep with their phone and wake up with their phone, they don't feel that. They feel horrible in the morning. And I bet you know this as well, because you probably do the exact same. And do you know why? Because you're like me. You're younger me. Dude, I was in the exact same position as you. I'm not judging you. I'm, I was literally like you. And here's a little bonus. This isn't like, you don't need to do this, but like if you really are struggling specifically with like doom scrolling, like scrolling on TikTok, Instagram, like even YouTube, YouTube shorts now, if you're really struggling with the whole scrolling aspect, go into settings and go into accessibility and then go into color and turn on mono. It turns your phone black and white. Your phone is gonna become really boring when it's black and white. You are really not gonna wanna scroll on there for hours. You're not even gonna wanna touch it unless you have some sort of like mono black and white fetish. God, I really hope that's not the case. That'd be really weird. Look, technology is a big thing. Right? It's very difficult not to use it. AI is now a thing, and it's hard not to sort of be around it all the time. It's hard to take a step back from technology. But look, you clicked on this video, it means you want to start. You want to start to improve your life, and that's a step in the right direction. If you're on self-improvement, you got this. Stay consistent and do the best you can. Love you, bro. Mwah. Thing is, this doesn't screw on properly. It's not connected right now, but like, it doesn't screw on. <laughs>